It's still Halloween here, following with the previous episode. So we just stopped at the singleton. We created our, we transformed our overseer into a singleton, despite the fact that anyone uh, says that you shouldn't use singleton, but we will use it and we will use just one. And now let's just further improve it so that it fits our application the way we want. So the first thing we will do is that we will create additional map inside. And this will be a map of uh, dynamic into a function. And this will be internal. So let's call it factories. And this map will be predefined. As a key, we will use the name of a class as we did in the previously here. Let's repeat that, so contact manager. But as a value, we won't use the instance because that would mean that we will just create one instance in this overseer and this instance will be available for the entire uh, lifetime of this application. So if we take an, again this analogy of a garden, it will mean that the overseer hired this manager or this part of the garden, but this person will always work there, which is not a good idea because if the person is, for example, tired or not good enough, it should be replaced with another person which does the same thing, but uh, it's rested or does the, the job better. Simply put, we will not create an instance here, but we will just say if someone asks for this manager, then create the instance. And uh, for that, we will do this trick where we will uh, just pass the, the function here, like a function without arguments, which returns the instance, which means that this instance will be created only when we invoke this, this small function over here, right? So if you ask, for the contact manager from factories, it won't return contact manager. It will return a function which knows how to create this instance. And this is just a trick to, we say, defer the instantiation. So we defer, which means that we wait with the creation of the instance until we need it. So until someone invokes this. So let's repeat that for um, other so country manager i will type it i won't uh, paste it so just you can get familiar with it so again the name of the class and then uh, the function which invokes the um, the constructor of this manager and returns this because this is the implicit return here we could return it differently for the last one let's write it in a explicit way so explicit way would be like this return form manager, right? This way, equivalent to this one, but it's just shorter and I prefer it. It's just, just a function, just a function with uh, empty input parameters, arguments, and it, it creates the instance and returns this. So let's remove the return and let's transform it back into an implicit return. Okay, so now we have the factories. Now we have the repository of instances. So let's put those things together. First, let's remove, so we don't need this anymore. And let's add the first method, which we'll, we will call summon. You know, we will be summoning managers into our beautiful garden. And we will be calling them, summoning them by name. And now let's do it in a longer way first. First thing we need to do we need to find the function that creates our instance, can summon this manager. So it's simple. We have the factories map over here and we can just say, let's call it, so we want a function which will be called manager factory. We usually name a functions which returns object as factories. It's a funny way, funny naming convention. So I will call it manager factory and we will get this manager factory from our factories. So we will just say factories and we will access by name. So we will just select if someone passes contact manager, this will return this small factory and we will have this, this whole function in this manager factory. So now we need an instance, right? So we will do var instance and we will do manager factory and we will call this, right? So it will invoke this function and it will return the instance. And then we will return the instance back to the entity that 
uses the, the inter, our interface, the Salmon interface. So someone who calls this function and specifies the name of the manager that entity wants, it will search in the factories, invoke the factory and return the instance. But with this approach, whenever we are summoning manager, it will always be created. The new one will be created. But what we want to do is that we want to use, we want to store the instances in our repository as long as they are needed. So it's slightly different than, than Singleton because in our overseer, this class which manages that, it's always one. But here we want to achieve something else. We want to have this periodic disposition of managers or we want to just hire them for specific periods of time. So we don't want that an instance exists whole time, but we also don't want to create a new one each time we need one. For example, we just want a manager, let's say for a week in our garden, which will correspond maybe to a few seconds in our application. And in order to achieve that, we will, instead of returning the instance right away, we will uh, store the instance in the second map, in the second hash. So we will say that store the instance over there and return repository name. So as you can see, this could be simplified. So instead of creating the instance and then assigning it, we can just do it in one line, like so. We also don't, don't need to assign it to a manager factory. We could just invoke it right away. So instead of doing this, we could just take and invoke the function right away, which leave us with that. We can go even further because in Dart, we can convert it to an implicit uh, function, this assignment as well. So we can just do implicit assignment and we can return this last return. And this form of a function will say that assign this result of invoking this function to this and return this from this function, which is exactly what we did, but it's just, it's just shorter. So register we don't need. And let's re-implement our fetch function. So it will be slightly different. Here we are returning that directly from the repository, but now our overseer is transformed, which means that this repository is empty at the beginning. So we need to check if there is something in the repository before we return from it. So we will just say repository contains key name. And if it contains something in this repository, so if repository is not empty, which means that someone invoked the summon, someone summoned this manager, in that case, we will return the repository index as before. Uh, but otherwise, we will summon it. So we will just call summon name. So this summon will assign it to the repository. So the next time someone calls this, it will go directly to the repository name. And this is our internal function. Let's name it with a prefix at the beginning to say that this should be only used inside this class, just to simplify a little bit the, the flow, our code. So that's for the fetching. And now let's create another uh, function release, which didn't exist before. So this will be a function that will allow our overseer to release, to get rid of those managers that are no longer needed or should be replaced. And this function will take our manager from the repository. Here we will do something. So we will say manager dispose. So we will ask the manager to dispose of the resources it held, so of the streams. But I will comment this out for a moment. Finally, we will call repository remove to remove this so that when someone asks through fetch for another one of the same type, it will summon it. So I commented out the dispose because right now our repository is dynamic and dynamic. We can put anything in this map, so which, it, which is not good because again, it's unlimited, you know, as with the, as the way the singleton behaves, unlimited map of unlimited possibilities. So let's restrain it. Let's contain it a little bit. Let's say that this map can only have managers. So let's first create that. So this will be an interface in our application. Create an interface called manager. So in Dart, you don't have like a specific uh, syntax for interfaces. You need to create abstract class simply, which is a class doesn't 
have instances, which cannot have instances. This way, we specify a behavior we expect for each manager. Because we are about, it's about a garden, we have this protocol which says that all managers we hire will have this method, will have this ability to be asked to dispose of the resources they manage. In other words, we will say that a class that implements this interface must have the dispose method. Right? So this is just a way for us to restrain possibilities, to be sure that the repository contain, contains only managers. So let's import this. And now we can say that this is manager. And now we, we will see if I just type that there is the dispose method. So we expect that every instance has the manager. But that's not all. We need to force those managers to implement those this one method dispose, which means that we need to change them in a way that they will implement our manager. So this one already implements dispose, so nothing here. This one doesn't. So let's see what happens. So if I say manager, you know, you see that there is an error. And if I hover, there is one overwrite we need to create, and it creates for us the dispose, which will be empty. We will take care of that later. And finally, the form manager. So we have implements manager, and as well, we need to create the dispose. So let's go back to the overseer. And now we know that whatever we are taking from the repository, the value, is always a manager, which means that it always has the dispose method. So when the overseer, this top manager or this, this leader of the garden, decides to release a manager, it knows that it can call the dispose method and then it removes that from the repository. It's uh, not a lot of code and we haven't done anything yet in our application, uh, but I will stop here. See you soon in the next episode of Flutter in Practice.